Just ask the Lord. If you want to be in use of God through the gifts of the Spirit, just ask, Lord, is there a word? And you have a word, just put up your hands and just speak up. Hallelujah. Let the Lord minister through you to those around you. Why don't you pray the prayer of thanksgiving? Just thank the Lord. Tell him how much. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much you need him. Just thank the Lord. How much he means to you. How much that the breakthrough that came through for you this week meant a great deal to you. I don't know who that is, but God said there is a break. That someone this week received a, a breakthrough. Something happened in your life. Something good. I don't know who that is. I don't know what that is. Just thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for this wonderful time. We thank you for your wonderful presence. Father God, we pray right now that as we draw near, you will continue to come. You continue to let your uh, your presence be known to each and every one of us, of oh God. Even the hardest of hearts, God. Even the broken of hearts today will be healed, God. Mm-hmm. Even the, the 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 ones that are, 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 are feel so distant from you, Father, they will know you are near. Holy Spirit, come. Let your river flow, let your fire, Lord, burn in every one of our hearts. God, that you will just come, Holy Spirit, that you will make Jesus known, Spirit of God. For that's what you do, and that's what you, you, you do greatly, to glorify the Son in us and through us, to bear witness that we are children of God. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, so come, 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 and walk in this place, walk in our midst. Let everything that is not of God, let everything that is not of Christ in our life be removed. Amen. Only the things, only those that are of Christ, of Jesus, we establish your perfect will, your plan, your hedge of protection. Mm. We establish in all of our lives. Let there be answered prayers today. Let there be numerous miracles even today. Lord, I pray. Let there be numerous healings even today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Eyes will see better. Years will heal better in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pain at the right side. I don't know who that is, but there's someone with a pain at the right side where, where your waist is. Hallelujah. God is healing that right now, this moment. In Jesus' name, I command the pain to be gone in Jesus' name. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Father, bless the service. Bless us. Father, we continue to pray for our church that you continue to use us, Lord, as a as a lighthouse, as a salt and light, God, in this time, in these days, oh God, in this season, oh God, Lord, that we will see, Lord, many will come to Christ. We will see to the ministry of this church. Many will come to you, oh Lord.
many will come to you through this church of God, through all of us of God. We just thank you, Lord, that you will see multitudes of families, young people, professionals, God, all nations, all tribes, all tongues, all races be in this house of God. We just thank you, Lord. We give you praise, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Before you sit down, just shout a hallelujah or victory unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, right. Okay, I was told today that uh, my voice is very soft. Okay, I don't know. I can hear myself. Okay, anyway, yeah, the sound men, I hope they are okay. They look stressed. Okay. Praise the Lord. Okay. I hope everything is okay. Everything okay? Sound? Okay? Good. Caroline, maybe you can. They look stressed out. They look broken. <laughs> anyway, praise the Lord. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, yeah. Welcome to the house of God. Thank you for worshipping the Lord. It makes a whole lot of difference, you know, when, when everybody, you know, join in voices, join in heart, in spirit, in faith to draw near to the Lord. Amen. That's what the church is for. You know, some people say, you know, I don't want to go to the church anymore because the church is full of broken people. You know, I cannot tolerate this person. I cannot tolerate the person. I don't want to go to church anymore. But, you know, the church is like a gym. You know, like there's a gym at the corner, right? When you go to the gym, right, you will see people who are of different fitness levels. Yep. Okay, some are very fat. Some are, you know, uh, trying out to pull the weight but cannot pull. Ugh cannot, 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 you know, they want to lift the dumbbell also, they cannot, you know, some are, are, are starting off with uh, 3 kilogram, you know, you know, and, and you wonder, why are they so weak? Why are they all so troubled? Uh, they don't seem to be fit, you know, that kind of thing, right? But then there are those in the, in the gym that are, wow, muscular, toned, can run 10 kilometers without fail, you know, they, they can lift, you know, can lift uh, 10 bags of rice, you know, without any problem. 10 kilograms of rice. Uh, each, each bag is 10 kilograms. You know, and that's what the church is like. The church is a place where broken people come together. People who are broken in the world, you know, broken by the world. But yet, when we come to the Lord, when we come into the house of God, the brokenness is welcomed. Because God says, in your weakness, my strength is made perfect. Be who you are. Sometimes brokenness, today I'm talking about resetting boundaries, right? Sometimes brokenness is the place where your boundaries are reset. You start to realize that, hey, you know, I like what Pastor Chris Rue said. I never heard it, but my wife said, she told me, she told me this. Pastor Chris, you know, in one of the services, okay, he said that we are Christians, right? Something like that. But we are not meant to be step all over. You know, you don't step all over Christians. You don't run over Christians. You know, we are called to love, but that doesn't mean you love until you abuse that love. You know, you take advantage of that love. No. We are called to forgive, but that doesn't mean, you know, every moment also is okay. I offend you, huh? You know, like some people, you know, there are people that uh, when they come to, uh, they get to know. You know, church, right? Sometimes they just want money, especially other ministries as well. So many emails I get every, almost every day. You know, uh, please donate to this. Please donate to this orphanage. Please donate to that. You know, that kind of thing. Okay, I would, I, sometimes I tell them, you know, I also need help. We also need help. Okay, can you give us? <laughs> if I have to pray for the finances of this church to flourish, to grow, you also have to pray because all of us are in the journey of faith. But sometimes in the lack of things, we discover that we don't need those things as much as we need the grace of God and the favor of God. So the church is a place where broken people come together to worship the Lord. Some 
know God better. Some are still at the beginning of it. They still have a lot of flesh, right? A lot of, uh, a lot of shine, a lot of uh, gloss that has not been rubbed away of the world. You know, there are some who are many years down the road, they are Christian by name, but they still don't know the Lord. You know, you ask them, do you know Jesus? Hmm. He, or oh, Jesus, huh? the pastor say one, that one, that one, that one. No, but what do you say? Who do you say Jesus is? Ah. Remember, Jesus asked the disciples, who do you say I am? Yep. And Peter got that revelation through the Spirit of God. Amen. So today, case, resetting boundaries involves the Holy Spirit. Resetting boundaries involves allowing God to bring you to the place where you become you. You accept you, yourself. You love yourself. You know, I was listening to this, uh, watching this uh, documentary, you know, uh, not documentary, this uh, food vlog, you know, it's on Mediacorp, but it's online as well, it's on YouTube. Makan on Wheels. You seen that? Brian Wong, uh, and then there was Melvin, the chef, and then this other guy, Mervin. I uh, can't remember what's his name. You know, they go in this food truck and they go around Malaysia, different, different parts of Malaysia. You know, and they introduce the different, different uh, Chinese new villages in different, different parts. There are so many Chinese new villages, you know, Kampung Baru China, so many in Malaysia. Those days, uh, back in those years, I, I read about the history. Those were the days where the Chinese were locked up because they thought you were communist. <laughs> yep, those were the days, right? But so they went to these places and then they cooked, they tasted, tasted the food of this place and then they cooked. And one of the, and one, one moment where they were discussing with one another, talking about their future, the younger guy said, uh, he, uh, Brian Wong, you know Brian Wong, right? Wong Lu Jiang, ask him, do you want to be a host or do you want to be an actor? What do you want to be? What do you want to focus on? He said he want to focus on acting because he said host sometimes is very hard. You know, very hard to be true to yourself. You know, and sometimes he said because when he does work, right? When he, when a task is given to him, he wants to do his very best in it. He wants to do his very best. He don't want to let people down. You know, he don't let people down. And he and then Brian Wong asked him why. He said. He don't want people to see the other side of him. That's the good side. And then there's the side where he's not so perfect. You know, the side where he feels that he's not good. But the side where he feels that people will laugh at him. The side where he's not so strong in, you know. And all of us have good sides and bad sides, right? Okay, all of us have sides where we want to show people that we don't mind people see the good side of us, that part of us. But we don't want to let people see who we really are what we really are like, you know? So today's message is something around that, okay? Okay, so pause for a while. We get into the announcements. We collect offering for God first, and then uh, uh, my click. Oh, wait, huh? Wait, I thought she's going to toilet. No, okay. I thought she's going to toilet. Okay, our office is back on this Tuesday, uh, every Tuesday at... 10.30. Join us to pray. Okay, if you can, you are in the neighborhood, come alongside us and pray along. Amen. Tuesday. Tuesday is also our tuition time. Right? Yeah. And Tuesday is also our prayer day. 8.30 at night is our prayer meeting. Right? Okay. We are, uh, we are ready in April. We are thinking and planning of a church camp, a church retreat for everyone. Okay? Uh, because uh, but we are looking at what is possible for us, you know. Yep. Okay. The easiest, of course, is kokop lah. Easiest. Easiest to do. Okay. Uh, yeah. But, you know, I, I don't know whether you guys are already, uh, would like to see something different. I don't know. So, but we are praying. We are talking. We are thinking about it. We will discuss about it uh, later on, on, on Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. So young. So many years ago. Jetro. See Jetro? There? Like that. Okay. Right? Okay. So that's about it. Great. Okay. Uh, we are rostering people, every one of you on for duty every single week. Okay. Each one was will experience serving the Lord in different capacities. Okay. I pray that you will be willing and will be available all the time. Okay. Yep. Uh, this is the way you begin your journey with the Lord and with 
loving the people, loving the church even more. All right? Okay, so let's worship the Lord through our giving. If we can get uh, Pastor Caroline to pray. Lord, we thank you for this time uh, of worship, Lord, even as we give our tithes and offerings to you. Lord, I pray that you will bless each and every one of us. Lord, indeed, you would open the windows of heaven and rebuke the devourer for our sake. Lord, indeed, each and every one of us causes us to be a blessing to many, oh God. And Lord, I pray for the finances of the church to grow. You will multiply it, oh God, Lord. The Lord, that many more ministries or many more people will be touched, oh God, that your word, oh God, would, would even spread out even much more than before. Lord, we just thank you, oh God, in Jesus' name name we pray. Amen. Right. How can you give? Very simple. The offering bag is going around. You can put your offerings, your tithes, your, your, your offering and tithes into the bag. All right. Otherwise, you can scan the... Wait. Yeah, otherwise you can scan the QR code that you'll see right in front of you. You're using Touch and Go, okay, or your e-wallets. You can uh, do that as well. All right, okay, praise the Lord. Uh, yeah. Okay, so today is all about resetting boundaries, and it has to do with, with the fear of the Lord. Okay, right, you know. You know when computers go haywire, like what I imagine happened today, okay? You know, when it goes haywire, what do you normally do? Okay, when all else fails, you press these three buttons, control, alternate, delete. Okay, and then a task manager will come up and then it says you want to shut down or you want to reset or you want to restart, whatever. Yep, okay, yep. You know, and most times it works. You know, sometimes when everything else fails, just turn it off. You know, shut it down, okay? Put it aside, put it one side, okay? Yep, and, 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 and sometimes as human beings, you know, we can come to a place where we are overly overwhelmed. Overwhelmed, you know, human beings, we are all people, we are people that absorb, you know, we absorb everything we see, we hear, everything we experience, we are, we are like a sponge, you know, taking it all in. You know, and especially with, with uh, social media, with the handphones nowadays, a lot of things comes our way uh, very fast. Okay? A lot of things comes our way very fast and too much. You know, those days, you only know of the news today, the next day, right? You know, or sometimes you don't even know the news, you know, at all, until somebody calls you or something you find out through your friend at the market, you know, gossip. Yeah? Okay? But today, nowadays, you get so much, you know, so much. And you're expected to, because of peer pressure, because of all these uh, pressures, and, and you need to be in the know. Yep. You know, you need to be formal. You know what's formal? Okay, fearing that you miss out on things. So you want to be there. You want to be going there. You want to be eating this. You want to be doing that. You know, and life... You know, sometimes in, in living a life where everything is so fast-paced and so much of information, right, at the fingertips, the you know, moment you open your Facebook, so much news already. Even before the news publishers can publish it, you already know what's happening, okay? You know, and it doesn't have to do with you. It has nothing to do with you, right? It has nothing to do with me. There's a scripture in 1 Thessalonians, right? And there's one scripture, one verse that, that makes a lot of sense today. It says what? Mind your own business. <laughs> okay. Mind your own business. Okay. Take care of your own business. Don't 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 be so busy and, and, and what of every other thing. But sometimes we don't realize. Sometimes unconsciously we absorb so much information, so much things. And you wonder why your brain is so painful. You wonder why your days are so strained and so stressed. You know, you follow politics and the politics, wow, one moment is here, one moment is there, the moment is something else, you know, kind of thing. And you worry, you know, you worry for your children's future, you worry for your own livelihood, you worry about your tomorrow because of the politics that you see going on as around us. Shall we move to Singapore? Shall we move somewhere else? Or shall we stay put? What's going to happen? You know, 
I remember in the first days, in the early years of plant, doing the church, the moment that something has to ha- ha- do that shakes, uh, triggers or threatens the, the status quo of church, I become scared. Oh, why like this? Why like that? Uh, are we safe or not? Are we secure or not? Didn't know it's so tough to pioneer or to, or to plant a church or to plant a, you know, do something like this, you know, in this world. You think it's tough, you know, but sometimes we get so much overwhelmed. Sometimes you need to, to deal with it is to stop, you know. It's time to rewind, recoup, reset your boundaries, you know. Sometimes you love, but people take a, uh, abuse your love, take advantage of you, step all over you, you know. Sometimes you care, but sometimes because you yourself don't set the boundaries. You yourself, you care too much, you know. And there's nothing wrong in caring too much. But sometimes you don't know how to rest in the midst of giving. You wear yourself out. There's nothing wrong in giving. Jesus gave it all for you. We, cannot, we can never outgive Jesus. Give, Jesus gave until he died on the cross. Okay, and I will talk about it later when we come to the Lord's table. Sometimes we need to come to the place, you know, to reset boundaries, reset limits. How much I'm willing to give before I break down? How much I'm willing to go? How much I'm willing to do? You know, how much am I willing to, to love, to forgive? Even love has its limits. Love and in as much as you can. Not love until you, you bang sun. In as much as you can. You know, there are limits to everything. But sometimes we forget those limits. Why? Maybe we want to feel important. Maybe we want, we, we want the person to recognize that we are useful to you. You know, or sometimes you are selfless. You are just a selfless person. You give and give and give and give. You don't care about your own own comfort, your own situation. You will care more to see your children, your grandchildren, your husband, your spouse, you know, be in a better place, be in a better situation, you know. It's not about you, you know. I'm sure there are nobody sitting here that are always looking to yourself. I'm sure everyone of us here, because we are Christians, we are always giving. We are expected to give. We are expected to love. We are expected to forgive. We are expected to go higher, right? But sometimes there's needs of limits. Sometimes we need to redraw and let God reset the boundaries in our life. Right? Okay? And it all begins with the fear of God. With the fear of God. Both ways, the giver and the taker. The one who gives needs to know the fear of God. The one who takes also needs to know the fear of God. Okay? Right? Let's pray as, as, we, as we get into the Word of God. Father God, I pray that you will help me to bring this Word of healing to your people. Father, only you are the healer. Only you are the comforter. Only you are the consoler. And you are the counsel of men. Father, so right now, Father God, speak to your people. Throw your arms around your people, your arm of love, your arm of grace, strength around your people. Lord, walk in this place. God, take away the bitterness, take away the hardship, take away the, the strength, the strain, the stress of life and replace it with your peace that comes through the cross. The peace that saved, that, that given us life to you, O God. So speak, O God, right now. We just thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, this is the story. I wanted to call it Abigail because it's a story of David and Abigail. Okay? And of course, there's, a third, there's another person that is in this story. His name is Nabal. Okay? Say Nabal. Okay? The, the name, his name is Nabal. Okay? And, and in this story, it's all about limits. You know, it's all about limits, setting limits, removing limits, 
you know, setting boundaries, removing boundaries, okay, and reminding yourself of who you are, who you really are in God. Sometimes in life, okay, or at most times in life, we need Abigails in our life. Okay, you don't want Abigail here. But not this Abigail. This Abigail cry a lot, okay, shout and scream a lot, okay. The Abigail that you need are people that God uses to come and tell you, remember who you are not. Remember your calling. Don't do that. Go this way. Go that way. People that God brings, people of favor that God brings at the right time, in the opportune time, at the Kairos time to tell you, this is the way. Walk in it. Okay? And many of us, we want that kind of person right now, right? Many of us, we've been praying for certain things and been waiting for so long, you know, and we want God to bring someone you know, to speak to us, this is the way. That is the way. Because right now, at this point of time, you are frustrated. You are stressed out. You are wo- you're worn out. Okay? You can be in ministry and you are tiring out. Okay, I've been, I've been preaching for so long since last year, non-stop. We only had one or two or three guest speakers throughout last year. Okay? Until now, I'm still preaching since the start of New Year. Okay? And honestly, sometimes it can be very tiring. Okay, spiritually. Not spiritually, but physically. Because you're giving and giving and giving. Yep. But I learned to realize that my limits has not reached yet. I learned to realize that, you know, when I'm, when I'm poured out excessively, I need to be praying a lot more. I need to be in the presence a lot more. And I need to battle the battles in my mind, you know, with the faith of God, with the Word of God. I need to silence the devil in Jesus' name, okay? And to let the Word of God get back into my mind, get back into my spirit once again, and rise from there. Because the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head, right? If you want to walk with God, you need to pay the price, right? So, now, okay? So, there was a man in Mount, okay, whose business was in Carmel. And the man was very rich. This is 1 Samuel 25, verse 2 to 3 and onwards. He had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. And he was sharing his sheep in Carmel. Wow, Nabal. This is Nabal. He's a very rich man. The name of the man was Nabal. Okay? And the name of his wife was Abigail. She was a woman of good understanding. Beautiful. See how scripture doesn't describe the man, but describes and praises the wife. Because the man, according to Abigail, was a scoundrel. According to her own husband, this man is no good. <laughs> right? She's not happy with her husband. Okay? She was a woman of good understanding and beautiful in appearance. But the man was harsh and evil in his doing. He was of the house of Caleb. You know Caleb, right? One of those that crossed over into the promised land together with uh, uh, Moses. Right? Okay. So, that's Pull it back a bit. Psalms 112, verse 1. It says, Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. Okay? The word of God. Okay? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Can everybody, can everyone, anyone know, understand the ways of God, the word of God? Yes. Has God given you access to understand God's word, God's ways? Yes. You know, and even if God don't tell you and give you the whole picture of what He wants you to do, if God tells you to obey, you have to obey. Even though you don't understand because you understand the faith, you know, and when walking in faith, you have to trust God. Okay? And you have to obey God. Obedience, obedience is immediate. I always tell my boys when they were younger, I said to them, obedience is immediately, okay? It's not tomorrow, it's not next week, it's not next year, it's now. Obedience is immediate. I used to tell them that. When they break the rule, pop, <laughs> here comes the, the obedience. <laughs> yeah, those were the days. Okay, now, okay, so everyone has the privilege to understand the ways of God. Everyone knows it. But the underlying motivation of God is always love. Know this. The underlying motivation of why God does what He does, why He do what He does, is because of love. You know, God said this to me this week. He says He don't, lo- he don't hate. You know the people that go to hell? 
God doesn't hate them, you know. God does not hate them. It's they that chose not to follow God, not to obey God. God has no way. If God hates them, God would have killed them already. He desires for none to perish, the scripture says, right? But all to come to the saving grace. Even though that person has not accepted him, it doesn't mean God hates them. God is a God of love. If God would hate them, he would destroy them, wipe them off already. God even spared the people that were in Noah's time, that were under the flood. Who did Jesus went down to see, to preach a second time, give them a second chance? It was the people who died in the flood in Noah's time. So you know the ways of God. The way of God is love. His motivation is love. He loves you. He cares for you. There's nothing that would cause God to be against you. Okay? You know, His mercy is far richer and far greater than the mercy that man can ever master, I tell you. The love of God, you know, is far greater, far deeper than the love that we can bring out from our life. You know, you throw a stone into the ocean of God's love, that stone would never find a bottom. You, you know that? That's how much God loves you. But God is a holy God. He hates sin, but He doesn't hate the person. He hates sin because sin separated His Son from Him as well. Yep. Okay, you fear the Lord, the Lord your God, serve Him and shall take and shall take oaths in His name. Don't take oath in your name, take oaths in His name. In Jesus' name, let this be done. In Jesus' name, let that be done. You know? For, you know, get behind me, Satan, you shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only you shall serve. Okay? So the word fear, okay, in the Old Testament, to fear the Lord your God, is basically worship. The same scripture in Deuteronomy, you shall fear the Lord your God, is the same scripture that Jesus quoted when he rebutted the devil in Luke 4, verse 8. Get behind me, Satan. You shall worship. You see, the word fear is the word worship. Worship is not just singing songs. It's not just about that. Worship is the position of your heart towards God. Are you for Him or not? Or are you in your heart divided, wanting to, tempted to go into that sin? Certain things you don't, shouldn't be doing, shouldn't be going, shouldn't be seeing, shouldn't be hearing. Your heart is at war. You know? Right? Okay, so we are back to Nabal. What has this got to do with Nabal? It hasn't got to do with Nabal. It has to do with David. Now, there's a rich man. He was evil. He was all that. But his wife was understanding and beautiful. So David, after fighting wars, running from Saul, David was, you know, anointed king and all that, but he had to run for his life. You know, the, the stories that come before this, he, 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 he had opportunity to kill Saul, but he said, cannot touch him because this is God's anointed. He felt so bad because he even cut out a corner of Saul's garment. He felt so bad about it. You know, should not touch God's anointed. That was David's heart, you know, because God chose him. You know, let God dispose of him. Let God do, do what he, God wants to do with him. But for me, I cannot touch him because for I know he is God's anointed. I don't know anything else. Don't want to play God. Okay? Let God be God. Let God decide. Let God determine. But everything else, okay, leave it into God's hands. So David, after fighting the war in Keilah, he saved the city of Keilah in his own town. From 400 men, he gained another 200. These 200 men were Nabal's shepherds. Okay? Nabal's shepherds. Okay? So 600 men. So David thought in doing a favor for Nabal, David could get some respite, a refreshment, a meal. You know, in favor, like I do something good for you, hopefully you can give me something in return. David was tired. He was worn out. You know, he was tired. He was worn out. He was thirsty. He was hungry. He was stressed out, you know, running for his life. So a moment of judgment lapse comes to him. And David, this is what he says, David heard in the wilderness that Nabal was sharing his sheep. David sent 10 young men, and David said to the young men, go up to Kamal, go to Nabal, 
Greet him in my name. Wow. We are the servants of David. Okay. King David. The, the king to, that is to come. Thus you shall say to him who lives in prosperity, Peace be to you. Peace to your house. And peace to all that you have. You see, even though David was appointed king by God, anointed king, David wasn't in position yet. Yep. David wasn't in position. But the people knew. You will see in this story, the people know that David has already been anointed. But it's just that the time is not yet. Okay? Not yet. But David, at this point of time, was trying to overstep his boundaries. Sometimes you are so impatient, right? So impatient. God has called me to do this. But the time is not yet. You know? But David, because his flesh is crying out for food, crying out for rest, crying out for recognition. Why must I run? Why must I bear this reproach for God? Why must I run from Saul? I could have killed him, you know, but I spared him. But yet I'm running for my life with these 400 men that I have to take care of, take care with. So now, have you heard that your sharers, your shepherds were with us? Okay, the servants of David told, tells them about. We did not hurt them, nor was there anything missing from them all the while they were in Kamal. Okay, sometimes you think rich people are generous. Forget it. Okay. They are rich because they know how to keep. <laughs> no, no. But sometimes you think being rich, right, they should be more generous. We should never expect things from people, whether they are rich or poor or whatsoever. Never. Never do that. Okay? Expect nothing from people, everything from God. And this is what David learned. Ask your young men, they will tell you. Therefore, let my young men find favor in your eyes. For we come on a feast day. Please give whatever comes to your hand, to your servant and to your servant's son, or to your son, David. Please give to us whatever that you want to give. Give to us. How many of you like this kind of people? Come to you, they expect you to give to them. You know, I've experienced this many times in ministry. You need to give to us. Why? Because you are commanded by God. It's God's word. You have to obey. You know, when you see a brother in need, you have to help. Wow, these kind of people, they twist and turn the word of God. You know, yeah, for their own, own delight and their own fancy. You know, they don't care about your own, your own situation. They just want what they want. And David was like that. He, moment of careless judgment. Then Nabal answered David's servant and said, Who is David? Oh, Lucy Tiang. <laughs> you know, Awa siapa? Ah, saya tak kenal awa. I don't know who you are. Who is David? Who is the son of Jesse? Wow. So rude. This is the king to come, you know. This is the king that's the, the one that's anointed king to take over from Saul. But Nabal, being who he is, answered in that crude and rude manner. Who is David? Who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants nowadays who break away each one from his master. <laughs> Shall I then take my bread and my water and my meat that I have killed for my sharers and give it to the men whom when I do not know where they are from. Wow. Insolent. <laughs> it's an insolent reply. So David's young men turned on their heels and went back. You know, they malu already. You know, they're angry already. They're frustrated. Don't they know who our, our master is? They came and told him all these words. And David said to his men, see how David responded? Would you respond the same when you are treated unfairly? Will you respond the same when people cross your boundary? Your, your, your boundary has been broken through. Okay? Okay? Your, your space, your speciality has been trespassed. Then David said to the man, Every man get up on his sword. How can he don't know who I am? Okay? So every man get up his sword. And David also got up on his sword. And about 400 men went with David. 200 stayed with the supplies. 600. Why? They're going to kill Nabal. They're going to go up to Kamal to kill Nabal and to wipe out everything that he has. That was David's plan. Why? Because he was disrespected. Because he expected Nabal to give him something good. But Nabal was rude and Nabal was insolent. Nabal was uh, replied in such a manner that was unfavorable. So David's pride, see, pride. 
David's pride was hurt, was wounded. How can he treat me like this? Don't he know who I am? Okay. Now, so David was going to step out of his boundary to bring harm to someone because he was angry. Both of them, Nabal and David, their boundaries were broken through. You know? You sh shouldn't, should not expect people who to give you just because you want it. You should ne never put people in the place of pressure or unfavorable place just because you are in need. You may be in the place of real need, but that doesn't mean you put people in the place where you put them in pressure. Your friend, for example, your friend sells you something, wants to give you, uh, sells to you something. You know, oh, the, the other day, we went to visit Ansa. You know, Ansa, his tailor shop. Caroline went in and said, wow, so nice, huh? this one, this one, this one, so nice. Okay, so nice. The next moment, you know what Ansa did? Which one you want? Because I, then I realized, oh, Middle Eastern. Middle East people, uh, when you begin to admire something in their house, when you begin to, wow, nice, huh? the person will give it to you, you know. Wow, nice Rolls Royce. You want? If you're in Dubai. Do you want? So I, told, I turned to Ansa and said, Ansa, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I know what your people are like because... We, we experienced with Shabazz and Nazrin they all before. So it's okay. No need. You know, but I know he, I asked him before, how much money do you send back to Pakistan? He said most of it. He earns about two five. He sends most of it back to Pakistan. So in my mind, how can you afford this? No need. No need. It's okay. Okay. Make chapati for me, can. Okay. Other than no need. Okay. So, Sometimes we put people in the place. But sometimes David's attitude and mind, because of his own weakness, he's tired, he's worn out, he's been chased. You have to understand David. He doesn't, he's not like that. Sometimes he's very rash in his decisions. He killed the wife, uh, the husband, because he wanted the wife. He's, he's always been like that, very rash in his decisions, very callous in his ways, right? But he's king, you know? And he's tired, chased for his life, run for, for his life. But, they, but God protected him as well. He, he and Saul were in the same town, but because God protected David, Saul couldn't see where David was. You know, it's amazing. Sometimes you're in a place where you are and you lasted so long uh, because God blinded the eye of your enemy. Your enemy cannot see you. That's why he cannot attack you. Thank God for his grace. Thank God for the work of God in your life that you cannot see. Thank God how much God has protected you, how much God has provided, how much God stood for you in ways that you would never realized. You need to thank God. Okay? So boundaries are uh, broken through. Now, this is where we need Abigail. Abigail's in our life. Okay? Now, one of the young women, young men, told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Look, David sent messengers from the wilderness to greet our master. And he reviled them. He was so rude. But the men were very good to us. He was one of the 200. We were not hurt, nor did we miss anything, as long as we accompanied them when we were in the fields. They were a wall. They, they were a wall to us both day and night. All the time we were with them, keeping the sheep. They protected us. The, 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 the men of David, even David protected us. We were kept from harm. This was the 200, right? Now, therefore, know and consider what you will do, for harm is determined against our master, against all of his household. The servants on the bar heard that David was going to wipe them off. David was angry because of the scoundrel on the bar. Even the wife said, for he is such a scoundrel that one cannot speak to him. No one can speak to him. He, he's beyond correction, cannot correct him. He's always right. You know, cannot correct him. He's always in the, in the, in the you know, cannot one. He's just like that. He's just a scoundrel that one cannot speak to him. So what did Abigail do? Now, therefore, so Abigail got up, you know, and ran and went towards David. Make speed towards David. 
And when she came towards David, what did she do? Therefore, my Lord, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, all oh, a big, huge conversation. She pleaded, but she didn't plead in pitiful, in pity mindset, you know. She reminded David of who he is. We, he, she even know, you know, that, that, that David, your life is being after, that Saul is after you. You know, we know what you are going through. You see, the whole of Jerusalem knew of David's plight, David's situation with Saul. They knew. But it's just a matter of time, you know, that he will become king. So Abigail, you know, was a, was a, was a, was a voice of reason, you know, in this, right, in this moment. As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, since the Lord has held you back from coming to bloodshed and from avenging yourself with your own hand, now then, let your enemies and those who seek harm for my Lord be as Nabah. And now, this present which your maidservant has brought to my, to my Lord, let it be given to your, the young men who followed my Lord. But please forgive the trespass of your maidservant, for the Lord will certainly make for my Lord an enduring house Remember, David, who you are. God will make for you an enduring house because my Lord fights the battles of the Lord and evil is not found in you throughout your days. Remember who you are, David. Remember you are chosen by God. You have a destiny ahead of you. Don't bring yourself down to the level of a scoundrel. Don't bring yourself down to the level of a fool. Don't bring yourself down. When people want to fight you from the bottom, don't go down there. You are better than that. You are a child of God. You are the head of, and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are blessed. Know that you are blessed. The Bible says in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd and I, don't know, I should not lack. You know, sometimes we pray, I should not lack, but I'm still lacking, Lord. Why? You're not lacking. You have the Lord with you. It's just that you think you are lacking. That's why the Lord is not enough for you. You need to realize it means the Lord is my shepherd and I do not lack. You do not lack. You are looking at what you have, but you are not looking at who is with you. Yep. So, we need Abigail to tell us, who, to remind us who you are, who we really are. You are a child of God. Don't go down to that level. Come back up. Come back up. Remember who you are. Yeah, you have a greater destiny. You have a, God has a bigger plan for you ahead of you. Don't throw it away now. Don't throw it away. Sometimes the battles are hard, but the breakthroughs are greater. Far greater than you can even imagine. Some always give up too soon. Some always turn back. When you are really nearly there already, you turn back, but you just can't see it. Yet a man had reason to pursue you and to seek your life. But the life of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of the living and with the Lord your God. You dwell in the living. Don't dwell with the dead. You dwell with the, with the saints of God. Don't dwell with the, with the, with the, with the people who are, have no heart for God. And the lives of your enemies, he shall sling out as from the pocket of a sling. Let God deal with your enemies. Let God fight your battles. Don't fight it. And it shall come to pass when the Lord has done for my Lord according to all the good that He has spoken concerning you and has appointed you ruler over Israel, that this will be no grief to you. Abigail reminded her, when you become king, if you kill Nabal now, this will become a black mark in your legacy. People remember this king, oh, he killed Nabal and he killed that, that white, that uh, the husband of the wife of Bathsheba, you know, black marks, right? This will be grief to you, no offense of heart to my Lord, either that you have shed blood without cause or that my Lord has avenged himself. But when the Lord has dealt well with my Lord, then remember your maidservant. Okay? God dealt with Nabal. He dealt with Nabal. Abigail became a uh, wife to David. Okay. So sometimes when we are faced with challenges, trespasses to our life, we are tempted to get down to that level to fight as the world fights. Fight, fighting for the peace as the world gives peace, right? Jesus said, Peace I give to you, not as the world gives, not like the world gives. 
peace I give to you. How did Jesus give us the peace? On the cross. Our victory is what Jesus has done on the cross. You see, David was brought to a place by Abigail where he had only two choices to make. Obey or don't obey God. Obey God or don't obey God. He had no other choice. Now, why is David a man after God's own heart? Because at every time when he is brought to this place, when he's confronted with his weakness, with his errors, with his mistakes, John, you know, he was, you know, reminded, you know, of how he he killed Bathsheba's hus- husband for her. Nobody knew that he did it until he was confronted. But what did he do? Did he run away? No, he repented. Why was he, why is he a man after God's own heart? Because whenever he comes to the place where his heart is divided, he always responds to turn his heart back to God. Repentance. He rather bear the reproach for God than to become a reproach to God. So sometimes when you bring you are brought to the place, for example, offenses, you have no choice but to obey God. No, you actually have two choices. To hang on to offenses or to forgive. Jesus said, God says vengeance belongs to him. Right? You know, rebellion belongs to him. It's not yours. You know? And if offenses is because of people that you love, people who love you, how can it be that you wish bad upon them? You cannot. You cannot wish, you cannot pray God do something bad to them. You cannot, because you love that person, right? So you have, sometimes when God brings you to a place where you have no choice but either to obey or to not obey, what is your choice? Of course, I hope it is to obey. Right? Why? Because of the fear of God. Lord, should I do this or should I not do that? The fear of God will guide you what you should or should not do. The fear of God will tell you what you should say or should not say. You know, the Bible says in the multitude of words, there's sin. Right? Scripture also says sometimes we need to set the gate upon our lips. No need to always say things. No need always to speak up. Just because you see something, sometimes it's better to hold your peace than to speak it out. Words are toxic when it comes from the flesh. Right? So, sometimes it's the fear of the Lord that will stop us destroying things around us. And Jesus did it the same thing. He had no choice. Father, forgive them. They are coming to the Lord's table for they do not know what they do. He had no choice. Because apart from him, there's no other saviour in this world. If Jesus didn't do it, who else could die for us? Who else is that pure and white and, and sinless lamb of God but him? Right? Jesus showed us the way and what is the way that we need to bear our own crosses. You know what? I chose the last two songs just now. Lord, I come to you. Lord, I give you my heart. I realize we talk about grace. We talk about mercy. We talk about the love. We talk about the good things of God. It's like sugar to our our flesh. It's like sugar, you know. We want to hear the good things. But then a lot of us miss out on the grace and the favor and the mercy of God. Why? Because we don't want to bear our crosses. You want God to feel, you need to let go. You want God to increase, you need to decrease. You want God to break through into your life, you need to stop struggling with God. 
And you need to begin to answer why you don't believe God. You need to begin to confront unbelief in your life and ask God, heal my unbelief. Because everything that God does begins at the cross. Yep. The cross is foolishness to those that are perishing, but it's the message, it's the gospel, it's the good news to those that are being saved. Ignore the cross. God has no choice. He loves you, but He hates sin. If you hang on to sin, He has no choice but to let you go. Don't be safe and keep on singing. Don't be safe and keep on relying and, and uh, playing with sin. Sin is pleasure, pleasure of your life. You think God cannot give you pleasures? God can give you pleasures. God puts the things that you do in the right place for the right purpose, for the right reasons. Sin is lust. We want something, we can't get it. You know, we see something, our eyes are oh, triggered already. You know, we, we are, why? Because our minds are so in the world. You know, Jesus was in the boat, right? The disciples were drowned. Well, they thought they were going to drown in the boat, right? Yeah, why are you laughing? Okay, I have to think that. Okay, they thought they were drowning, man. The waves, the storm, the storm, everything shook them. They cried, Jesus, don't you care? Je Jesus woke up and said, you are little faith. Suddenly, when I heard that scripture this week, if you have little faith, that means you have a lot of fear and unbelief. So little faith must grow. It must grow. It must become, you know, that the, the game on the internet on the handphone, right? The small fish eat the small fish and then become bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay? Our faith starts off with a master seed, but it must become bigger and bigger and bigger so it can eat the bigger fish. That's what faith, that's what we need to go through. Every time God gives you a place where you're offended, it's a moment to grow your faith. Every time God lets you go through a moment where you're deep offended, you're hurt, you're frustrated. Those are moments where boundaries are reset. And what are those boundaries? Stop playing God. Stop playing God in your life. Let God be the God of your life. Learn to trust Him. Learn to rest in Him. Learn to believe that the cross is good enough. The victory on the cross huh, is thorough, complete victory for your life. If you stand rightly in the things of God, I tell you, you will be healed, you will be blessed, you will be saved, you will be set free like never before. It's just that we don't believe enough. But that doesn't stop God from blessing you. If God waits for you to believe, you will never get what you want, what you need. But God blesses you. Why? He loves you. He loves you. Know that He loves you. Huh, Auntie Betty? Yep. You're never alone because God is with you. Some of you think you are alone. You're not. God is with you. You have family. Okay, auntie, you got space in your house to relax. Some of us want space to breathe. Also cannot. <laughs> Don't have. Okay, I kind of think. Father, forgive them. To be a Christian means to forgive the inexcusable because God has forgiven the inexcusable in you. Now, can you pass out the communion emblems? Now, I'm going to yeah, sit first, sit first. I haven't finished. Long way more. Now the few close now the six closes uh, and closing. Six more closings before I close. No, nah. Okay. This was something that God struck me with this week. In, in fact, just yesterday. You know, I was under a barrage of uh attacks, spiritual attacks. My mind was felt I felt like I was um uh, put down, pushed down pressed down, you know. But when I brought myself yesterday, I said, cannot, I cannot come to church and preach feeling like this. Okay. You know, and I, I asked God, uh, God, I give you this time. I'm going to worship. I'm going to put everything out the side. I'm just going to focus on worship, worshiping you, pressing in. You know, I, the whole week was terrible for me. It was quite, I was quite down. And I then begin to worship. So in my worship time, my quiet time, I always take communion. I partake of communion. Right? So, and I always uh, quote 
communion scriptures, right? You know, he was pierced for our transgressions. He was wounded for our iniquity. You know, the chastisement for our peace was upon you. By his stripes we are healed. You know, and then, you know, I was praying, talking to, to him about certain things. Then uh, the remembrance of the lines of the song suddenly came to mind. He was sealed in the tomb. I was listening to this song. I can't remember the title of the song. He was sealed in the tomb. The stone, you know, was rolled onto the opening of the cave or this tomb. Suddenly, God reminded me this. He told me this. That's the most alone that the Son of Man ever felt. You feel alone in your life? The Son of Man had everything, everyone, even the Father was against him because of sin, our sins. The world hated him, the disciples have dispersed, ran away. The Son of Man was buried in the tomb, the stone sealed, so that no one could open it, right? No one will ever come and reopen it. They make sure the second day, the soldiers, oh, make sure, thank you, Jesus, right? Right in time. Make sure that no one could open the tomb. Jesus was meant to be in the tomb for good, forgotten, forever. That was the heart of man. And that was the, the victory that the devil thought he won. Can you imagine? And everything and anything is against you. And you are in no wrong. Did Jesus do any wrong? No. Can you imagine that? We can't. Because in your trials, in your difficulty, in the moments when you are down, you can still turn to God, my Father. You see what God did to you, for you? But because of that, He gave us the power to victory. You see, many of us, or in fact all of us, when we go to our graves, we will not be perfect ones. Maybe before your last breath of life, maybe you told a small lie. You know? Maybe you, you broke the red, ran through the red light accidentally. No, you know, but those are, small, those are small issues. But we will go to the grave not perfect. Just like Jesus, he went to the grave with our sins. Right? But you see Romans 8, what does it say? It says that for those who are led by the children of God, uh, led by the Spirit of God, are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought your adoption to sonship and by Him we cry out of our Father. And the power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that is in you. Is in you. When you receive Christ, when you say the sinner's prayer, when you honestly believe in Christ and receive Him as your Lord and Savior, Jesus, God seals you with the Holy Spirit. You may not even speak in tongues, but God already seals you with the Holy Spirit. You know, and the moment, okay, every time you go through trials, right? Why? Because God is preparing you for the day where you need faith. You need to trust Him that He will bring you through. Okay? He will bring you through. And how does He bring you through? Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. The power that is in Christ that raised Jesus from the dead in spite of the world, of the, the sins, or the weight of our sins was upon Him. The Holy Spirit in Him brought Him back to life. And that same power is in you, is in me, right? And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Not to come, but right now. That power that raised Jesus from the dead is in you right now. The Holy Spirit is in you right now. Okay? So do you have any reason to feel down and to feel and to give up? No. You have no excuse because God has given you every power, every reason to rise up. Right? And that power is in the Holy Spirit. Acknowledge the Holy Spirit. He is the person of God in each one of us. He is God. 
Worship him. Don't use him. Worship him. Love him. Adore him as you adore Christ. Okay? And then you will see the Holy Spirit move powerfully in your life. Hallelujah. But how? Next week, I give you three keys. Not now. Three keys that will see you come and rise up out of your ashes into victory. You feel stuck? Do you feel there's no way to change your circumstances? You feel, do you feel that everything is against you? Oh, Jesus knows that. He knows that. But He also knows He has given you the power to rise above. It's in the Holy Spirit. So how do you gain the Holy Spirit? And this is something the Christian cults don't like. You see, Christian cults, they claim their founders are Jesus. The founder is the last pastor, yeah, uh, uh, the last pastor that is prophesied in the scriptures. There's no such thing as the last pastor. No such thing. Jesus is the good shepherd, not the man, not a man, not any man, not any person. Jesus is the good shepherd. You don't need any other shepherd. If you need a pastor to prepare you for the coming of Christ, what about the Holy Spirit? You have ignored the Holy Spirit. And that's the power. That's why cults cannot get through when you have the Holy Spirit in you. Because you know the power that raised Jesus from the dead is the Holy Spirit. It's not man, it's the Holy Spirit. Not by power, not by might, but by the, by the Holy Spirit, thus says the Lord. Amen? Let's stand as we close. I'm very excited. Already. Okay, so we're going to come to the Lord's table. So, Father God, we just bless the emblems as we come before you today. We thank you that your sacrifice has given us the promise of the Father. Your sacrifice on the cross, your obedience on the cross has given us the way to rise above and that is through your spirit. So Jesus, today, we choose to bear our own crosses. Today, we choose to align our lives together with you. And we choose by faith to acknowledge that we be crucified with Christ. It's no longer we that live, no longer I that live, but Christ, you live in us. The life that we now live, we live by faith in the Son of God who loves us and gave his life for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he broke it, and then he said, take it. This is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of, for me. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this, do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread, you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's part our bread and cup together. Praise the Lord. Father, we just thank you. We just thank you for your love. We thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for helping us to see Jesus, when you were in the tomb, when your body was buried in the tomb, you were all by yourself. There was no, nothing, nothing, no one that was for you. Even life itself was against you. But yet, hallelujah, you did it, you went through it for us so that we can have the promise of the Father, so that we can have the Holy Spirit and through the Holy Spirit we gain adoption as sons and daughters of the Most High God, that we can cry out, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father God, thank you for this access you've given to us through the blood, through the Spirit, through your word. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for giving us your life. We give you praise. Father, bless our week as we go from here. Grant us all journey mercy. For those that, are, that have prayer needs, I pray you will begin to answer those needs. You begin to release the blessings right now into their lives. Lord, I just thank you. 
I plead the blood of Christ over each and every one of us. We just thank you, Lord. Give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, Abigail, next time don't find Nabal. <laughs>